continues to keep my interest and my fascination because it is so valuable. Every time I go to the lathe to pick up my tools, I put it to the surface of the metal and it just flows. And I can create sensuous shapes just as far as I can dream. And I, I love it. So, Judai and I both took an apprenticeship in Canada, although she had been working with Pewter before we met. And we actually, after an apprenticeship in Canada, opened our very first shop right here in Woodstock. It's a thrill to be back in town for this exhibit and this show um, because it's, we have very fond memories of the first months of our business out on Line 6 here <laughs> towards South Woodstock. And um, Judah, I'll probably like to tell you a little more about the earlier days when she was first turned on to working with this man. Well, I went to school for smith uh, silversmithing and was introduced to Pewter at RIT and really fell in love with it right away because it was uh, it just had a lot of properties that just were very enticing, very malleable and warm as a metal, very useful, functional, which function was very important. So um, we started right out kind of... Uh, Really learning our way after our apprenticeship, uh, our short apprenticeship, we just started working and learning, and we continuously learn. You know, 35 years later, it's a uh, keep, keep trying to explore new ways to use the material and uh, techniques and all that. So it's, it's, it's given us a lot of possibilities over the years. Well, the fact that my ancestors were pewters has been a source of great pride throughout the 35 years that I've been working with pewter. It has given me a lot of inspiration as I think back on the humble workshops that they created such wonderful wares from in the early days of this country. It has given a certain flavor to our career, which um, it's there whether we want it or not. We've, we have worked really hard to, to develop our own designs. Our, we have contemporary classical designs. Which, which we don't, you know, we haven't spent a lot of time doing reproductions of our work. Um, we are, we, for a number of years, including the years we were in Woodstock, we did not make a great point of the fact that the ancestors were um, in America. We learned over the course of time that it was, it was silly not to make it known because it's a pretty interesting fact. And we now are comfortable enough in our own design skills that we don't feel like we are trying to live up to some expectation of a, of a prior generation. We're just really proud and it's a really wonderful connection. partners, um, what we say, partners in business and life, um, and it has evolved. We started out both doing just about everything, and you know, uh, there wasn't a lot of um, singling out of uh, what we did, and then we gradually gravitated toward uh, different um, aspects of the business. I was particularly drawn to the, you know, selling and marketing and how the how the products looked when we were done with them and how we presented them to the world. And, and Fred um, has done a lot of, he's very good at engineering things, so we would collaborate on design and he would, you know, really get excited about, well, how are we going to make this and kind of engineer the, the work. And also, uh, lucky for me, he was drawn to uh, the bookkeeping um, part of things or at least he took it on for us early on, which was great with, uh, for me, and also computerized our business early on. And um, I, I gravitate more toward the design and the, that kind of thing. So over the years, we've definitely um, found our niche within the business and collaborated in way, many ways continuously, and it's, it's worked for us. And as far as the actual collaboration with the material goes, we have recently begun working together on specific designs. We've been doing limited edition pieces and sharing um, a lot more uh, interaction in the design process, which you can imagine after 35 years of working together in the same business with all the same challenges, it comes home to the dinner table and it isn't always simple to, to work through issues and topics. And so it has been a great joy to me, I don't know about you, to work directly with Judai on designs that are um, relevant.
recognized as containing both of our efforts. Really collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. And our daydream lamp, which we're currently uh, selling the last a couple of dozen of, a, of an edition of 300, is the best example of that. Go ahead. So a year ago, we decided to uh, purchase the Shirley Pewter Company in Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg. It's a 60-year-old business started by Shirley Robertson, who was a master craftsman. He designed a line of kind of timeless designs, um, highly polished pewter, really nicely designed pieces. And his son had been running the company for quite a while. We bought it with the idea that um, the, the line was really, really fine, and if, if, it, if we didn't buy it and continue to make it, it probably would go away, and that's, that just didn't seem right. And it also, had, they had established um, a wonderful retail location right in Colonial Williamsburg that um, is a pewter shop, a very well-known, long reputation. So the two pieces for us really made sense, and uh, so we have been integrating the the, the line of a different maker, which we've never done before. And it has been exciting and challenging and uh, rewarding and challenging. And <laughs> it's really taught us a lot. And it's, um, we think it's, we feel very proud to be able to continue the work, of the very fine work that that workshop has been producing. Yes, the, uh, the original designer that Shirley worked for was one of the first demonstrators at Colonial Williamsburg when they opened the Pyrenees. And his, he was a German, he brought German engineering and German design. And since I, I haven't had the opportunity to work with my own ancestors' tooling and try to imagine what it would be like to make their pieces, it has been a real exciting challenge to take the tooling, which is, there's, there's a lot of necessary components to making computer on a lathe, even though it's a simple machine where the, there's a form of rotation, but there's a lot of tooling and I've had to s discern the, the secrets and the, the ideas and the insights that went into the making of some of these designs, which are quite fine designs, by the way. And so it's a very different type of creativity from what I'm used to, which is coming up with an idea and making the product. This is more like really sort of doing a little sleuthing, a little and sometimes some frustration and sometimes some modification. And we feel like not only are we keeping alive a line that's been around for 60 years, but we're also, in our own way, adding some, some subtle improvements to the way the design is presented with the finish and with, with some of the techniques. Kind so of restoring, restoring a line right. in it some isn't, ways. It isn't just, I mean, a lot of people think that we're just sort of in acquisition and we're, we're cobbling up Peter Cup. That's not the case. This is a one-time deal, and, and we're, uh, we're really keeping alive part of the craft tradition of this country.